Think of TPS as a home base for all your time, billing, and practice management needs. TPS is a full-featured time and billing program that includes WIP, receivables, invoices, and AR statements. In fact, it's kind of like taking all those files you've collected and tossing them into your computer screen, making your workday so much easier and your workflow so much faster. TPS even has built-in email capabilities and templates for invoices, client letters, and reports. What sets this program apart is it's simple to use, yet it has so many features to assist in practice management. And now with our cloud-based version, there's no need for upgrading. Anything newly added by TPS is instantaneous and right at your fingertips in seconds. Let's take a look at TPS now so I can show you a little bit about it. Everything about TPS is meant to help you with your day-to-day -day work. We have a toolbar that runs along the side here with everything from the client screen to time entry, work codes, billing, employees, reports, payments, workflow, and we even have a separate toolbar with some other options. To help you get started quickly, TPS gives you the ability to import your clients into TPS from an Excel spreadsheet. We even provide you with a sample of how to set up your columns so TPS can easily accept your information. For an additional fee, we also offer conversion services for any client list in a standard electronic format, such as Excel. One of the best things about the new cloud system is that we're adding short videos you can click on that will teach you how to accomplish every single task in TPS each step of the way. Anytime you see a video icon, just tap on it and see what you can learn. The key to any good time and billing program is to have information on your clients readily available. For that reason, TPS is designed to have the information you need to run your practice efficiently. The client list is easy to read with the use of labels. So when you have no label next to a client, like next to Smith Trucking here, that means that they are set to active and they're ready. If you see a red dot under the label, like next to Chillac Enterprises, that means they have been set to inactive. A green dot, like Audio King, means that you have them marked as a prospect. And a yellow dot means that you've placed them on hold. Your non-chargeable client, so the one you'd use when going into a meeting or training or when entering sick time, basically when you're entering any non-chargeable time, will be marked black. And again, if all clear with no label, that means they're fully active and ready to be worked with. So let's go through your client information real quick. For this, we'll take a look at the Bayside Restaurant. Over here on the General tab, we have basic information such as the client's name, how we want the name to appear on printed documents, and other information that helps us quickly filter and search for this client. We also include the client you're in, their website, and their industry. Down here in the group field, that allows you to link associated or related clients for WIP and AR reporting purposes. For example, Bayside is part of the Smith family group, because the Smith family owns several companies, all of which you do work for. The address tab has all the standard information, such as address for one or more offices, telephone numbers, and email addresses. We have several tabs that help with the administration and upkeep of the client's record, but let's take a look at the contacts tab. On the Contacts tab, you'll see that all your contacts or the people you talk to or deal with relating to each client are listed at the bottom. So to select them and actually apply them to this client, you need to send them up. So I'm going to apply Rebecca here. She's going to be my primary contact. And as soon as I put her up there, I have to choose what she is. She's my primary. I could put a description in if I want to, but I'm going to save. And you'll see that she comes up top. I also want to add Janice Cooper as my AR contact. So I'll put in here, AR, save. So Rebecca and Janice are now set as my Bayside Restaurant contacts. It's that easy. Now let's take a look at the Categories tab so we can classify your clients. The main purpose of the categories is to allow you to filter your clients list by either the type of client, the type of service you provide to them, or the type of mailing you want to send them. So you create your master list down here at the bottom, as you can see all these listed down here, and then you just go through and you apply those to your clients. So let's say that here with Bayside Restaurant, 
I do their payroll, so I'm going to send that up, attach that to them. Their 1120s, their W-2s, and I'd also like to send them a monthly newsletter, so I'm going to add that as a category too. And that's it. I've applied those to Bayside Restaurant. So now that those are set, categories are used throughout the year for filtering reports such as client lists and mailing labels, and also for efficiently implementing and using our workflow calendar. Categories can also be utilized in our mass mailing utility where you can print out or email a letter to an entire category of clients. For example, you might want to send a tax season letter to all your personal income tax clients. Due date monitoring allows you to track the repetitive work you do for a client. It allows you to define the type of work, frequency, and due date for the work. Using workflow, along with our client log, alerts, category, and mass mailing features, gives you the tools to manage your practice efficiently. All work coming due would then be viewed in a shared calendar screen for tracking purposes. If you'd like to learn more about workflow, you can take a look at the workflow video inside of TPS. On the Organizations tab, we keep track of all possible financial organizations that your clients may use. On the top half of the screen, we assign which bank, law firm, insurance company that the client uses. We know that at year-end, you may need to send out bank confirmation, so we provide various confirmation letters, including the AICPA and Canadian formats. All of these confirmation letters, as well as engagement letters, can easily be modified and edited. And to assign one of these organizations to Bayside Restaurants, really simple. So if World United Bank was their bank, I just click here, send it up. I need to put in a contact person. For my contact list as before, I could put in the account number and description, then I would just click Save. And basically, that's how I assign an organization to this client. In addition, TPS provides a full client log feature to track communication and any items we may need to follow up on, or even just a simple one-time reminder. Now that you've seen some of the client screen, let's take a look at the work code section. TPS allows you to design the structure of your work codes as simply or as detailed as you like. In the employee section, we track information for each one of your employees. TPS allows you to track up to 20 different rate levels per employee in addition to special rates for specific clients. The Courses tab allows you to track courses your employees have taken and the CPE credits earned. Now that we've looked at the Client, Work Code, and Employee section, let's enter some time, set it to WIP, and then bill it. With TPS, entering time is effortless. There are multiple methods of entering time, but the simplest is what many firms do manually. Who did I work on? What did I do for them? And how long did I spend doing the task? This is the time entry screen. It records an employee's daily chargeable and non-chargeable time. When entering time, you can choose to use the traditional method of entering just the number of hours worked, or you can come up here and use the stopwatch method. TPS also gives you the option of using a time entry calendar with month, week, and day views. But to show you a quick time entry, I'm going to go back to the time entry grid and do a regular new time entry. So all you do here is choose your client. Let's say that I'm going to do, let's go ahead and go back to the Bayside restaurant, put in the work code. Now I'm going to go ahead and put in occupational payroll. Let's say I worked on this for three hours. You can see that it automatically put $495, which is based on the rate that you set for this employee and tied in with the work code. In the description field, you can enter a further note to describe exactly what happened when you worked on this client. I'm going to leave it blank for right now and click Save. And you'll see that it is set to time now. In order to set it to WIP, you just click the checkbox, come up here to your Actions button, and then to make sure it's set to WIP and available for billing, you just click the Set WIP Status. And as you can see, there are little videos on all these actions that show you how to do them. So I'm going to set WIP Status here. You can see it changed to W. I also wanted to show you that you can set time in the time entry calendar the same way. So let's if I wanted to do one here, just click New Time Entry, and I basically just fill this out exactly with the information that I would have used on the other screen, and then it shows up in the calendar grid. So now let's go take a look at the billing screen so I can show you how to create a bill for the Bayside Restaurant. The billing screen gives us information in two ways, summary and detail. The one-line summary shows us information such as unbilled WIP, 
client ID and client name. If there's an engagement attached, it shows us billing notes we might have put into the client screen to make sure we saw during the billing process. Then if we click on their name here, we get a more detailed view. This shows us everything from year-to-date billings to year-to-date markups and markdowns, billings all of last year and last month, and even the markups and downs all of last year, as well as their total AR, their last payment date, and their last invoice date. Let's go ahead and take a look at Bayside Restaurant's WIP in detail. So I'm going to come over here, click, choose Detail Bill, and that opens it all up in Detail Bill view. If I had no intention of applying a markup or a markdown and I just wanted to go ahead and bill everything the Bayside Restaurant owed us, then I could choose Quick Bill. But I want to show you what Detail Bill can do. Okay, so let's say that I want to sort this and bill everything from this year and December of last year. So I'm going to go ahead and choose those. Okay, now I could bill these lines at the amount shown, but I'm going to choose to bill them at a markup. So I need to come up here to the actions, final bill at, and then I can come down to the bottom and apply a markup. So I have my total whip, I have my leave unbilled if I wanted to leave something unbilled, I have my billable whip, my bill at, and my markup or markdown field, they work together. So let's say that I want to go ahead and make this an even, let's just say $1,200. You can see it automatically shows the markup of $57.50. Now once I click OK or click the little green check mark, you can see that the system applies the markup proportionally to each of the lines of WIP build. Here. I could continue to build the rest of Bayside Restaurant's lines of WIP with or without markups or markdowns, but I'll stick with just these. You can change the date or template or invoice number if you needed to, but I'm going to leave it alone. Now, once I click OK, the client will have a $1,200 invoice on their account and the WIP will have been relieved. So I'm going to come down here. I have to confirm my taxes first. Click Next. You can see over here that WIP has been relieved. I'm now at the screen where I need to decide what it is that I want my invoice to say. This screen allows me to add wording to the invoice so it makes sense for the client. So I have several options for doing this. I can add something from the work code description. You see where it says show with the little eyeball. I can open that up, expand it, and send that down. Or for the time entry description from when I was actually entering time and put something in. So let's say that I like this one here. I'm going to send it down. Library of paragraphs gives me options. Let's say that I like uh, 210 here. Usually there are past invoices too. If we've had past invoices, we should have a section on here where we can actually see things we put in the past on invoices. And I can even come down here, click the plus sign and add something from scratch. Just type it in myself if I want to. I even still have the option to change the template. Let's say that I like the IS5 I'm deciding right now. I'm gonna change my template. And you always should preview your template. When I click Preview, it creates the invoice, downloads it to my computer, and then I can open it up and preview how it looks. Any changes that need to be made must be made back at the Billing Paragraph screen here where we're at now, not in the preview of the document. So here on the Preview screen, you can see that it has all the information we put in. It's got the client's information here, it has our information up here, the invoice number, date, it has the paragraphs we've entered and the amount, if I wanted there to be actual individual amounts in here too, I can do that back at the billing screen too, and I'll show you how to do that right now. So back here on the billing paragraph screen, you have that option to put in those specific amounts for each line, each paragraph. Here you can do that. But as you do them, you just need to make sure that it adds up to the total amount here so that it all makes sense on your invoice. I like what I saw though, I'm gonna leave mine alone. So once we previewed it and you like everything that you have on there and you're finished, all you do is click Next. And I'm finished with that invoice. That's it for our quick TPS cloud overview. Thanks for watching. TPS Software. We're the sensible choice.